Hello seasonal allergy sufferers. You're coughing and wheezing followed by the return of the birds, the leaves turning green and the flowers blooming only mean one thing for me. Camping season has returned. Hello fellow campers, that's right, it's the beginning of the year, camping season has returned. Now before we take our precious RVs out onto the road, there's a few maintenance things that we really should and we really need to do to make sure that we have a successful camping season and that we protect our investment and make sure that these things last for quite a while. So we're going to start with the roof and work our way down and go around. And I know this is a motorhome, but a lot of things apply to whether you have a fifth wheel, travel trailer, and different types of motorhomes, whether it be a Class B, Class A. So I'm going to try to touch on a little bit of everything and compare the parts. But even if you have a tow vehicle, your tow vehicle should undergo some of the same maintenance that I would do with this motorhome as well. Because you're strapping on 5, 10, maybe even 15,000 pounds worth of trailer and you're asking that vehicle to pull it. They need to be in tip-top shape as well. So I'm going to try to cover a, broad, a range, a whole broad range. Uh, a wide array there we go of vehicles so let's get on the roof and we'll talk about roof maintenance first and then like I said we'll work our way down so the first thing we're gonna look at here is the air conditioner now you can go I have a an Amazon store link is down below some of the products are listed there or you can go to like Lowe's Home Depot they sell a can of cleaner it's called a, you know air conditioning coil cleaner that you can use to keep these coils clean. This will help keep you cool in the summer because this is why we don't live in tents. But here under the front half, this metal box is where your evaporator is. And as you can see right down there are the air filters for your RV. So you don't want to use a hose necessarily in here. This is where that spraying cleaner works really good. And then they have a brush that'll come in here and fix any bent fins. As you can see, mine is in really good shape. It does look slightly dirty, so I am gonna have to get some of that cleaner and revisit that. I didn't plan on this. I actually forgot about cleaning this. And then you have the evaporator coils, which is right here. This is the part that's outside. And here you can use a spray in the cleaner and then use a hose. You want to make sure like all your leaves and stuff are, are out of here. We don't want anything that would retain moisture or block airflow. So yeah, right now mine's actually in pretty good shape. You know, you might want to check out your fan, make sure your fan's all in good shape. Everything spins nice and smoothly. Because if you have a bad bearing in your motor here, that'll ruin your camping trip. This is what your compressor. And then you might just take a quick look around and make sure, especially when you got places like here where the wires are wire tied in, that nothing is rubbing through. And as if you didn't know, there's your capacitor. Probably wouldn't hurt to have one of those on hand because those are known to go bad. And like I can see a slight problem right here. You got these two copper wires rubbing against each other. So let's take a little preventive measure, measure there and move that away. I just want to make sure that when I put the cover back on, it's not going to push it back in. But yeah, we don't want stuff like that happening. And then we wear a hole in one of the lines. So, all right, let's. So far, this looks pretty good. Just button this up and we'll move on to the next step. Okay. One of the most critical things, the biggest thing that we have going on our roof is it keeps our rig watertight. And one of those key things is this self-leveling lap sealant right here. So we want to make sure that we're checking all these seals around here to make sure there's no way place water can get in. I found a little spot here near the ladder that will touch up right here but we want to make sure we're going to go through everything right here where my solar goes in we want to check where the roof vents are while we're up here if you have solar we want to make sure our solar is tight and it's being held in place we have our bathroom vent here 
our skylight for the bathroom. We also want to make sure the stuff's still kind of pliable. But we're looking for, you know, this, you know, roofs get hot, they get cold, this stuff will condense, it'll shrink, and that. Here's another bathroom vent right here. We also want to check out the condition of our roof while we're up here. We want to make sure that there's no rips in that. And then we also have sealant. Hopefully you guys can see that. We have sealant that runs right here as well. So we want to check down the whole seam of the RV. We also want to make sure that this gutter is clean. Actually, what I do is I keep a leaf blower in here. So every time we get we move from one campsite to another, I always blow the leaves out. Looks like there's some sealant there. Maybe we could touch up a little bit, or I should pull this thing off and check underneath there. But we're videotaping, so for the sake of time, again, we'll check our solar panels. Here we got our roof antenna. This is probably the most critical piece is the front cap right here. I don't know, somehow I think I want to add a little bit more right here. Check our clearance lights. I had problems when I bought this thing brand new with water getting in here. Why you understand, this vehicle is a 2020. I've only had it a year, so I'm still up here doing this. We did find some places from the factory when I had an inspection done on this vehicle that the factory didn't do a very good job on. So even if they're brand new, it's a good idea. Get up here and check all this stuff. You know, like especially these solar panels, I added them. If they're brand new, you shouldn't slack on maintenance and checking things out. This isn't something you want to rush through. This is your vehicle. This is your investment. And you want to go out there on the weekend and have a good time. Or if you're going to be like us, we plan on going out full time. We're slowly working our way into it, easing it. We're not going to often sell the house and jump into this thing full force. We're going to take our time, ease into it. All right looking pretty good now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wash the roof it's part of uh, preventive maintenance this is rubber it's kind of like a living thing we don't want it to dry out it's kind of like your car your armor all your dash I said everything that I show you here I have links in my Amazon store so it's by Camco pretty popular company for selling stuff it's a rubber and roof cleaner so we're gonna go ahead and wash the roof and then I'm going to go back and just touch up a few spots that I found. Now you can go ahead and touch it up now. That way you don't mess up your roof by walking on it when you do it. Or go ahead and uh, do it afterwards. Just be like me. Just out here in bare feet and won't mark up the roof. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't wear very rough shoes on this rubber roof either. You don't want anything that you're going to grab and end up pulling the roof off. You don't want sticky tennis shoes up here really. Want something nice and soft. But yeah, this is, uh, like I said, it's a, it's a roof. Con it's, it cleans and conditions. It's rubber. You want to keep it soft and pliable. So we're going to go ahead and wash the roof next and take care of that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just want to make sure, put this out there, make sure you use a very soft brush on that roof. You don't want anything too abrasive. It is rubber. You don't want to risk scratching it or even puncturing through there. So next on the hit list of stuff to do is, just like on a roof, we have seams here that need to be 
checked as well. All along the length of the coach here we have seams. They're around like the vents here for the air conditioner. They're all over the place. Especially here on a motorhome where the cab and the body of this meet, there's a lot of sealant. So we need to check those seals there as well. And I want to let you know, uh, give you a little advice here. There's two different types of sealants that they use on these. One is a self-leveling sealant and the other one isn't. So you want to use the self-leveling on the roof. This is by Dicor. This is a, the 501. This is the 551 non-self-leveling. So you want to use the non-self-leveling on the side of the RV. So like the name says, it's self-leveling. So if you make it into a big blob, it'll fan out. That's good for the roof. That way you can put it on whatever and it'll take care of itself. It'll mold itself in and that, that works great on the roof. You don't want that on the side because then it'll just run down the side. So just know that there are two different types of lap sealant. Be careful which one you use. Also highly recommend these. I have them in my Amazon store. These are airtight containers that come apart and it keeps your sealant fresh for a long time. I mean I've had this tube in here quite a while and uh, it still pushes out and it's still fresh so get you one or two of these to keep one each of your dock. That way you don't waste it That because you might not, you're probably not going to need a whole two when you're doing these patch jobs so then you could just put them in your container and seal them up. So, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and give this thing a bath, make her look nice, shiny, and good because like for me it's been sitting in the garage, it's dusty. I know a lot of people have outside storage or they rent a spot in a storage unit and they're outside. So we want to make sure we take care of it. You know, these if you have like me the the vinyl graphics, you know, you got to keep them up or they'll dry their crack. You know, if you spent the really good money on multicolor paint, you really don't want that going bad. So we want to keep these things washed, keep all that stuff off of them. And I recommend this. These electric power washers are freaking awesome. I did a review on this one. It's by Sunsill. It's got a cool roll-up hose and everything on it. And the best part, it comes with this little foam cannon. Now I just fill this up with car wash, spray the vehicle down, and if it's not that dirty like it is now, I'll just rinse it. The act, the uh, foam and stuff, and the soap will take care of washing it. If it is dirty, we got a lot of bugs on there. I'll use that brush and wash it off. But these electric power washers are great. I mean, even if you're full time, you can keep it in the vehicle. It folds down to nothing. I mean, look, that's it. It's like a little carry-on bag. It's very lightweight. Very powerful, too. So check that out uh, if you want. Like I said, everything that I use in here is in my Amazon store, like under RV items or look under reviews. I believe the power washer is under reviews. Items are reviewed. And I'll leave a link down below. I did a complete review of that power washer showing you uh, what all can do so. We're going to go ahead and wash the vehicle, and then they'll be nice and clean, and we can go ahead and check all the seams and caulk those up. So next up, this is very important. We need to check out our tires. We need to check the tread, make sure it's plenty deep. You know the old saying, take a penny, put it in here. If you can see Lincoln's head, something like that, then they're time to be replaced. They also have built-in wear indicators, which you might be able to see right there. Uh, I hope this is going to show up. There's a little raised bump right there in between the treads. And they'll be in a couple different places in the tires. Yeah. Uh, right there is one. Maybe you can see it. I know it's kind of hard. But yeah, they have built in wear indicator. So we want to make sure we got plenty of tread depth. We want to look at the sidewalls. We want to make sure that there's no dry rot no bulges anything like that and there's also a date code it should be right here you have your dot number and then there's a code so this means it was meant built the fourth week of 2020 and and i think they only put this it seems at least for these these are generals 
on one side because when I check the dualies in the back I can't find the date code but they're supposed to be by law on the tire so if you don't see it it might be on the back side now I also highly recommend getting a TPMS definitely check your tire pressure but if you have a TPMS this right here is very affordable I have a link below to this and this has worked great I've used this for a year now it recharges via solar or you can even have a uh, USB in the back to charge it up this has worked extremely well for me as say very inexpensive and it, it'll let me know if I have any problems you can set the parameters too high too low too hot it'll give you a temperature so very good right there so make sure you check your your uh, tires and you also might want to double check and make sure your lug nuts are tight especially on trailers stuff like that have new rims you want to make sure those things are torqued like I said, very, very critical. Check your tires. And definitely, this is something, you know, check your tire pressure on every trip. Or, or, you know, just make life easy and get you a good TPMS. All right, so now that we have this all washed and that, I highly recommend that you put a coat of wax on the vehicle. It's really going to help protect the paint, especially like these stripes, if you had the vinyl stripes. And if I said before, if you pay big money for the multicolor paint job, it's a good time to wax. I recommend... This right here, the Meguiar's Mirror Glaze Professional Polymer Sealant, and I'll have a link down the store. But I did this vehicle a year ago, and I tell you what, it still feels amazing. It is very slick. It's, it's been it's been good. Now, granted, this does stay in a garage. It does stay totally covered in a garage. We generally take it out one week every month, so that's how much it's out in the sun for the most part. We go camping like five to seven days at a time like one week out of each month except for you know we we stopped in december and now it's to april so about four months it's it's sat so you know i know if you're going to keep it outside and it's going to be in the weather it's going to probably need it a little bit more frequently but right now i've washed this thing several times bugs come off it easy and this feels amazing but if you do have uh like a really nice paint job just sample an area make sure it's not going to scratch So it's safe on, on all paint finishes, but still, you know, always good to sample it out before you try. And to make your life easy, get one of these relatively inexpensive random orbitals. You can get these things anywhere. Uh, you just put a bonnet on here, and you can go to town. Nice thing, RVs are fairly easy. They're big, flat. So I'll give you a little pro tip here, because I used to detail. Once upon a time, when I first got out of the Army, I was detailing a dealership when I was going to college for criminal justice. I uh, worked at a dealer, so pro tip, when you get done putting the wax on, put a nice, fresh, dry bonnet on here, and then you can use the bonnet to take the wax off. Make life easy. But this does come off incredibly easy, and it's so far from what I see, it lasts a really good long time. That's why I recommend this. Requires pretty good stuff. The thing we're going to do, we're going to start from the front, work our way around, and this is something you should do on every trip, and that is check all your lights, clearance lights, turn signals, headlights, brakes, check your horn, do a complete pre-trip, make sure all that stuff works, especially on trailers, they're really good for like losing lights. Now, underneath the hood, this might not apply to you if you have a trailer or fifth wheel, but you do have a tow vehicle, so this should apply, so go ahead and take your time here, check your oil check your transmission you most likely have an automatic there's like 90 percent of the cars out there the automatics you want to check the transmission fluid when the vehicle's running and up the temperature there's a pump inside the transmission that pulls fluid in so it's going to read high if it's not running so transmission on engine and will be off so this is a good time now check your coolant check your coolant reservoir make sure that it's up to spec especially if you have a tow vehicle you're gonna be pulling a lot of weight or even here with the motorhome we're gonna be pulling our Buick behind here we're gonna have a tow vehicle so we're gonna be asking a lot of the vehicle to make sure we got coolant make sure we got washer fluid really important especially if you can hit a lot of bugs check your brake fluid pass it and if you're not mechanically inclined take it someplace you know get it checked out but you know this is a good time to check all the wire especially like this if it's been stored Make sure no rodents have made a nest in here, birds or anything like that. Nothing's gotten in here and did anything crazy. So we check our battery connections, make sure they're tight. 
we just overall glance. We want to check our hoses, make sure they're not dry, there's no bubbles. We want to make sure the belts are in there. And I tell you what, these vans are really, really hard to find this stuff. They're so buried in there, but it's not impossible. It just takes a little bit of looking. So, yeah. Okay, so lights, check your fluids. Just make sure everything, all in all, is in good shape. All right, if you have an onboard generator, or even if you have an external one you carry to power your stuff, this is a good time to go ahead and check the oil. Make sure that it's full. And you also might want to change the oil. Uh, I think the Onan recommends every 100 hours. So I don't have that, but it does look like I do need to add a little bit of oil. So this is why we check these things out. I don't plan on using the generator, but you never know. Also, there's an air filter here that we need to check. And along with all of that, good idea again to do a visual inspection. We have the fuel line running here. We have electrical connectors here. We have battery connections. We want to make sure none of this stuff is loose. Again, we want to make sure no insects or rodents or anything have made a home in here. Nothing's chewed through any wires. We don't want to fire this thing up, put 110 volts, and it shorts through the chassis and does some damage. Um, so yeah, we just want to go ahead and get this a, a checkup, and then follow the manufacturer's instruction. You know, if it's time for a spark plug and all that stuff, then so be it. And again, you know, if you're not mechanically handy, this is just something you do. Take it to the dealer or have somebody come out and do this for you. But these are just things that you should do. Set yourself up for success to have a trouble-free season. That's the whole game of it. We want to have fun. We don't want to be messing with repairs. There's our air filter. Looks really good. I really don't have a whole lot of hours on this generator. I do start it up. And that's another thing, too. If you have a generator, it's a good idea to go ahead and start it up. Let it run. Run it for 30 minutes. You know, really put this thing, uh, let, it, let it work. Let it get up to temperature. These things love to run. It's not good to let them sit. You know, get some fuel running through that carburetor and that like that. So if you have a generator, do use it. Don't just let it sit there and use it for, you know, like I said, I haven't really, every time I've gone camping, I've had hookups or I've been able to run stuff off solar, but this is a nice secondary system to have just in case. And it does need to be used. It's just like your car engine. They need to be started and run. So do actually use your generator. Next thing we want to check, all these luggage compartments have seals. We want to make sure that the seals haven't come off, gotten stuck. Just make sure they're in good shape. If they've come off, re-glue them or if you have to replace them. So we want to make sure our luggage compartments stay dry. Now the next thing on our list is going to entail water. Now first this is going to be a little bit of a personal preference. If you decide that you want to sanitize, which basically entails adding some bleach to your tank. Uh, fill it up with water, add some bleach. Basically, you should have a winterizer kit that came with the uh, RV and you adjust your settings over here and you put on winterize and you turn it on, you'll inject some bleach into your tank and you drive around, let that settle through, run it through your pipes, then flush it in. Uh, like the campground we're going to does not have on-site uh, dump station so I'm not gonna do that but I really don't think I have a problem with it as of right now so I'm not gonna sanitize but that's gonna be a personal preference uh, maybe you want to do it every year if you're worried about it uh, to me I haven't kept any water in the tank over the winter time so I don't think there's anything in there that could have went bad I mean just a little bit in the bottom we kept in there and I'm gonna drain it out fill it drain it a little bit just kind of flush it a little bit so but water filtration, so most people, like myself, we have these blue filters that go on. Uh, it's a good idea to replace it every season, so I have my replacement filters. Now this isn't going to apply to everybody, but Jayco actually puts an onboard water filtration system in here. It uses these big filters, and it's back here, right there in that big housing is our uh, internal filter so it's a good idea to go ahead and replace that internal one as well you know once a year maybe more if you deem you know we don't use the RV as much if we were full-time I'd probably replace these every three to six months all depends on how much you use like I said we go out once a month for about a week so you know about six weeks worth of 
use or about seven oh, I must say about eight weeks so two months worth of use so we should be we should be fine our water hasn't tasted funny also too you know uh, this might be a good time if you want to drain your tanks you got your low point drains and that you know empty the water out get that old stuff out of there at least you know like I'm not going to sanitize but I am going to dump all the old water out what I have left in the tank let's move on to the next step all right next thing on the hit list lube lube her up baby <laughs> yeah uh, so there's lots of moving parts on the RV so you have hinges on your door here you have windows that slide you also have your awning which you can't see in here but you have your awning the tracks on the side that go up and down they need to be lubricated you have a power step use something good like a dry lube I know <laughs> use a dry lube for that you also you know have silicone lubes and stuff like that they also sell a, a lubricant for these rubber seals around the windows right here this rubber to keep it nice and soft you can also use automotive wax always seems to work pretty good it rejects UV and it keeps that I've always had good luck with automotive wax but they do sell stuff to treat the window so let's go ahead and lubricate all the uh, hinges doors and all that stuff uh, especially like your if you have an R uh, motor home let's lubricate the uh, doors for the front and oh yeah we got one other thing we gotta check if you don't have I highly recommend you get these insect guards for any of these vents so we have an opening for this is the refrigerator there's also an opening for the hot water heater before we turn these things on and get them going we want to open these things up carefully and make sure there's no wasps, hornets, uh, mud daubers, dirt daubers, whatever you want to call them have made any kind of nests in here last thing we want to do especially like the fridge and the hot water heater uh, we have gas you know we have a fire we don't want to ignite everything so we want to make sure especially down here where the propane lights up especially spiders you don't want a big spider web and nest the eggs and stuff like that so we want to make sure everything's in good shape again we have gas lines here let's inspect them make sure they're in good shape that nothing is rubbed through don't forget you know these vehicles go down the road they're shaking and moving so we want to make sure all our power lines everything's in good shape like I said these insect guards are good but you never know so we're gonna open this up carefully we don't want to get stung or bit by anything so again this is the hot water heater we want to check our gas lines what we can see of it we definitely want to check here where the gas ignites you can see right here make sure there's no spiders and things spiders love to make homes in these things i was in the propane business for a while that would be a big problem with spiders making nests in these things so just overall give a general look let's make sure none of these wires are rubbing through chafing and all that stuff now also a lot of hot water heaters have what's called an anode rod it's like a sacrificial piece of metal that deteriorates from the electrodes, electrodes, electro, whatever in the water will actually eat the hot water heater. So you have an anode rod that would be here where your drain is. This is a good time to go ahead and replace that. Replace that once a year as well. Now this particular unit uses a like aluminum or I forget type of tank. So this one does not have an anode rod. So check with your manufacturer. Check your uh, unit and see if it does. If it does go ahead and replace your anode rod in other words your hot water heater is gonna just rust out and give you a bunch of headaches and you really don't want that that's why we're doing all this maintenance so we can have trouble free camping as much as possible so we're gonna take a little bit of time and go underneath the vehicle now if you have a travel trailer this is probably really critical I've seen many youtubers out there with broken springs so these are the leaf springs this is what they look like they're stacked up you want to make sure that they're all in a row you want to make sure there's no cracks in them you want to make sure that they didn't shift out of place and that they're nice and straight very critical especially on a trailer for some reason i don't think they use the best equipment on a lot of them and people tend to break these things a lot so in general you know rvs are just full of all kinds of wiring so we just kind of want to give a look around make sure that all this wiring looks in good shape that nothing looks like it's going to snag or do grab anything as we drive down the road we also have 
a propane manifold over there that we need to look at. Just check your lines, make sure all the hoses are in good shape. They're not rubbing and chafing. Like I said, these vehicles go down the road, things move. Just make sure you check as much as you can. Um, like for me, we have the leveling system in here, so we have hydraulic lines here. We also have a pump that I need to go check the fluid on. And, you know, just, just a general overlook of, of everything that you can. Check out your shock absorbers, make sure there's no oil coming out of them. Indicate a blown shock. Uh, make sure, you, you know, if you have a motorhome or a tow vehicle, make sure your differential here isn't leaking any oil. We don't see oil coming out of here. Same thing with the engine up front. Want to make sure it looks nice and dry as well you also have an exhaust on the uh, generator make sure that's connected and in good shape uh, there's my uh, I think you can see it my reservoir there for the uh, leveling system we have the jacks there if you, if you can make sure you know if you have a bolted on tank make sure your tanks in good shape if you have DOT tanks Make sure you know they're in good shape, that they're not rusting, anything like that. I also highly recommend getting one of these gas stop valves. If anything were to happen, if any of the lines were to rupture or there was a massive leak, this will shut the flow of propane off. This is a well worth the money to be safe out there on the road. So, so here's my uh, propane manifold. You know, these lines are down here. They're, they're subject to getting hit by things. So, I said, it's such a spaghetti mess of wiring that these uh, RV companies do underneath these things. It really is. And there's like my hydraulic lines right there. We want to make sure that they're not rubbing through. Which, that's really, really tight. I don't like the way they do some of these things. I would never make these lines as tight. Uh, it is clamped in there, but yeah. So there you go. I mean, that's just a general overview. I'm not gonna get too in depth with every single last piece here. I actually got a recall on that pump, so I need to check it out. There's something about that bracket could break, so. I actually have to bring this thing into the dealer and get this fixed right here. Probably because this wasn't a smart idea to get an L bracket and all this weight hanging on here. But for now, it looks like it's in good shape. But I do need to bring this in, get that recall done. So yeah, just overall, give everything a look. If you see something that you don't like, you know, maybe this thing's running around, clamp it down. And just take care of it because like I said, you don't want this thing going down the road it starts rubbing and it wears a hole through something so. all right i'll meet you meet you back outside all right this brings us to the end really on the inside i can't think of too much that you really need to do your ac unit you need to drop those filters keep those clean and that's like you should be doing that every month but other than that, I really can't think of too much you need to do other than, you know, your normal tank maintenance. Make sure you have some type of septic treatment that you can put down the black tank. It also helps to put that in the gray tank as well. It helps keep your sensors clean, keeps that buildup from coming up. Uh, like for me, I have a built-in black tank wash. I use that every time I, every time I dump that tank. I go ahead and use that high-pressure water and rinse that out. If you don't, it's a good idea. Maybe get one of those connectors that snap on your tank. You can use a hose. But definitely use some type of chemical to add into your black tank to help break down the waste. And like I said, it helps keep the sensors clean. But other than that, I really can't think of anything you need to do on the inside. Just, you know, keep, it, keep an eye on things. Make sure your hinges stay tight. Uh, make sure your refrigerator's in there. If you want to, pop open your the cover off of your heater. Make sure, you know, all that's in good shape. Know the gas lines and that in there check your gas lines out on your oven but really not too much uh, i can think of on the inside so that's where you come in if i missed anything go ahead and leave the comments down below 
and uh, you know we all benefit from this hopefully this helped you in some shape or form and this help will help you get a nice trouble free travel year out of your vehicle whatever it is I hope to see you in the campground see you in the trail see you on the road somewhere if you found any or hopefully you found a lot of valuable information but if you found some valuable information here please go ahead and leave a thumbs up please subscribe we're going to travel full time in this rig we're also going to go overseas travel we're aiming for 50 countries all five u.s territories and all 50 states of the united states here canada and that you know so we're going to, we plan on doing some traveling i hope you enjoy that we also do tech and repairs on the rv stuff like that so I hopefully you will join us in our adventures like shares comments appreciate it. it really does help the channel grow just simple things like a thumbs up leave a comment say hi nice video whatever it is it really helps so until next time stay safe and uh we'll see you by the campfire thanks for watching see you next one